this video almost never happened. Holcomb Valley Pinnacles is one of my all-time favorite crags in the world, but days before going on a trip that my friends and I planned well ahead of time, we realized that there was going to be a 50% chance of thunderstorm. It was actually going to storm no matter what, so we predicted that our two-day weekend trip was only going to be a half-day trip. So immediately I thought, was it still worth it to pay $6 gas to drive 3 hours out to climb for only half a day? I was so fast to send that I can't go text, but for some reason, just one message from my friend changed everything. Basically, it would really suck to camp in the rain, but if y'all still want to go though, I'm game. I guess for a while now, I've been having a hard time balancing my busy life as a med student with my love for climbing. I always wonder if a weekend is better off spent at home where I can get a lot more studying in and just go to the gym for effective training. I forgot that it's just nice to be outside and how getting shut down on projects can be so inspiring. For some reason, looking at this message made me think, no amount of money saved on gas or extra time studying is worth sacrificing my time spent outdoors, my youth, and the incredible memories to be made with friends. I was really thankful that Tommy gave me this new perspective and it kept me from canceling on the trip. When we drove up, we realized that the conditions were actually really good. Cold, dry, perfect. And I think I can speak to all climbers when I say that we all have that one climb in our memories that felt so out of reach when we were a beginner. A climb that we were only able to look at and feel weak. I mean, inspired by. One of these routes for me is called Doc's Holiday, a 510D. You see, being someone from San Diego where most of the routes are pretty short, seeing an 80-foot route for the first time was pretty breathtaking. The route starts out with around 5.5 to 5.6 climbing up until the 4th bolt, but from there until the 7th bolt, the climb thins out on crimps that aren't necessarily pumpy, but the holds are pretty hard to see and therefore it's tricky to execute the right sequence. I tried it once last year and just remember having to keep my crotch extremely close to the wall to stay balanced. And I never got the sequence just right back then, it felt like it was too scary to lead. Honestly on this trip I was pretty scared to lead it as well, so I took the opportunity to top rope it first to get the sequence down to chalk up the hold so I can see it better and place the draws. By the time I roped up again for the send go, it actually started sprinkling on and off and I realized I had a very small window of time to send it, so it just went. I was actually thinking of starting something new, which is commenting more on these kinds of videos just so it's not too boring and hopefully it'd be helpful for some people. The climbing for the first 4 bolts of this route is pretty easy and it's around 5.5 five or 5.6. Five There's not much to comment on so I'll be quiet for this part but I wanted to highlight some top down shots just so you can see how juggy it truly is. I guess for this part, I'll just read the description from the book. Clipping. Doc's Holiday, 510D, 4 stars. Another mega classic. This super sequential line is an unrelenting crimp fest. At the fourth bolt, mentally prepare yourself for a race the clock scenario on sparsely spaced holds. Leave your comfort zone, edging up the technical face on minuscule yet positive crimps. Originally started via a loose crack on the right, the direct start is much appreciated. If I remember correctly, at this part after the fourth bolt, the route juts out a little bit, so there's about 5 to 10 degrees of overhang. I personally used a longer quick draw for the fifth bolt okay. just so there's less reach to get to it and to help me with the head game. Coming to think of it, it was not too necessary, but it was nice to have. This is where the hard part of the climb starts. For some reason, no matter how many times I revisit this climb, the holds are really hard to see, so I took my time to chalk up the holds and the feet on top rope, which helped tremendously.
next part of the sequence is bumping out into this side pull and there's this really deep dish for your right foot. You just have to step high into it and after that it's just still continuing on these small crimps. The worst of the crimps come after this section with the left hand here and then the right hand going up. I full crimp on the right and then I walk the feet over. The holds are around 9 to 10 millimeters and after this part there's one last side pull crimp. Gotta really trust the feet, but after you grab this flake, the route is practically done. Okay. Made it past the hard part. Nice. Let's go, dude. Nice. Let's go. Finish it out, baby. All right. Just can't mess up the last part. Nice, dude. Let's go. Clipping. Oh. Let's go. Take a take. Nice. Big thanks to the crew. Tommy on the fixed line. Aaron behind the camera. Riley, Riley's bling. Um, But yeah, we should just be our own crew and just film the world. Dude, that's right oh. over us. We gotta fly. We gotta fly. We gotta go. Okay? We, got to, we gotta go. Mountains and thunder are not good combinations. Please. That was really close. That was right on top of us, bro. Not with Metal Gear. We gotta scram. Hauling like ten pounds of metal. Like, well, you would hope the anchors get struck first. Okay, fair. But we got a lot more metal than the anchor. You know Wait, that would mean? be a sick shot, though. <laughs> and then the right yeah. Right. And then we die. <laughs> All right, somebody stay rolling, cause if I die to a thunderbolt and I don't get it on footage. <laughs> <laughs> it started to rain and thunder pretty heavily and we rushed out of the crag. And the drive down was pretty immaculate, seeing the conditions change very rapidly and seeing all the fog roll in. Going on this trip made me realize that even if we don't get our sends in, it's totally fine. We always make good memories with our friends outdoors. But maybe, just maybe, on some occasions, we'll have a good story to tell too. Like how we drove two and a half hours out to get some climbing in, even with forecasts of a thunderstorm, fully knowing that we'll get evicted by mother nature. This is actually the most hail I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> We're making a snowball. Ow! Oh, it's kind of just fucking <laughs> ice. Throw it at Riley's car. <laughs> Nani? I missed! <laughs> 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 oh, <f> <laughs> he's the one back. <laughs> What's life about? You know what I mean?